Living on this planet can be overwhelming, and yet it's places like this that give us so much peace. These places can be easy to forget as we scroll through social media, watch more negative headlines on the news, or even just when we're in conversation with friends and family about this place. However, it's also really important to recognize how amazing this world can be and celebrate good things when we get them. One of those good things for me in the past few weeks has been the announcement that Patagonia is setting themselves up for long-term success with the creation of the Patagonia Purpose Trust and the Holdfast Collective. Now, yes, I strongly believe in what Patagonia is doing and love their mission. However, this structure may be way bigger than what Patagonia ever imagined it could be. Could this structure be the future of social impact ventures? Currently, there are three main models for creating social impact ventures or just ventures that are impact driven. Another way to think about them is that they're missional companies, ventures that have a singular overarching purpose that could dramatically benefit the world or a significant community. The three main models are B corporations, B Corps for short, hybrid, a for-profit corporation and a non-profit organization partnership, and a 1% pledge. Let's go over what the three are and some of the challenges that typically come up with each of them. You've probably heard about these and have seen the B Corp icon on packaging or other marketing materials. As Gusto defines it, a certified B Corp is a for-profit business that has gone through a rigorous review process to ensure that it's socially and environmentally responsible. Where it's complicated is that there is a legal structure for a B Corp and then there is a B Corp certification that is completely separate from the legal structure. The B Corp certification is completed by a third party called B Lab. Many legal B Corps have the B Corp certification from B Lab, but it's not a requirement. The vice versa is true too. You can have the B Corp certification from B Lab and not be a B Corp legal entity. So if you are a sole proprietary LLC or traditional C Corp, you can have the B Corp certification from B Lab. If you're wondering why these two B Corps are different, it's because legal entities are important, but at the same time, they're not. Before I go on this rant, I'm going, to, I'm going to mention that I'm not a lawyer, so don't take this as legal advice. Legally is out of the way. Legal entities are really for liability and economics. What they are traditionally not for is setting a purpose or of an organization. For example, it almost never makes any sense for a small business to be a C Corp or a B Corp legal entity, especially if it's only one or two owners. A LLC makes way more sense legally and economically. This is because a one or two person business doesn't need to be worried about having shares of a company and have the ability to sell shares. A LLC is a middle ground between a C Corp and sole proprietorship. It's enough protection for the business while providing some economic relief because corporations typically have greater taxes than a LLC. So if you're a small business but want to have the B Corp certification as part of your business, the B Corp certification by B Labs allows you to still have access to the B Corp standards as a LLC. This is nice for many as it allows you to be accountable to social and environmental standards more legally no matter what type of venture you have. The B Corp legal entity really cements the legal accountability but isn't available in every state in the United States just yet. Most states do and it seems like eventually every state will have it but currently that's not the case. So B Corps have been a popular option for many purpose-driven entrepreneurs as you can operate as a for-profit which gives you a ton of flexibility and still ensure that you're a purpose-driven company even after the founder leaves it. There's more to it, but that's the basics. Speaking of flexibility, let's move on to the hybrid situation where there's a for-profit organization and a partner nonprofit tied together. This hybrid for-profit and nonprofit setup can be complicated, but not as complicated as understanding the B Corp legal entity and the B Corp certification. A hybrid situation is when there are two separate entities that are very heavily partnered together, one being a for-profit entity and the other being a non-profit organization. These two organizations have to be separate entities legally and have a very clear line of separation, especially if the same people are or involved in both organizations. Typically, the for-profit organization will donate a lot of their profits to the nonprofit, and that's how the nonprofit organization will operate. For this to really work, the for-profit organization has to have a profit and generally a decently big profit. The reason some will create this hybrid setup is because a non-profit organization can have tax deductible donations and is required by law to have a charitable cause. This charitable cause is a double-edged sword though, as if the nonprofit is acting out of line with that charitable cause, 
they can lose their nonprofit in tax exempt status. The for profit business funding the nonprofit allows the nonprofit to not worry about that potential issue, and the for profit business has a lot of flexibility still. This flexibility is key for things like hiring, benefits and pay, and direction of the two organizations. A key factor is ownership. The for profit business has owners, while the nonprofit is a non stock organization. I don't love this model for two reasons. One is it feels like you're duplicating a lot of processes, and that's always inefficient. The paperwork just to set up both entities can be a lot, and if your organization structures are complicated from the start, it always feels like it'll get more messy as time goes on. Two, all the power is in the for profit organization. The nonprofit is just getting the scraps of the for profit business, and the for profit business could just cut off profits to the nonprofit at any point in theory. There may be good intent to have this set up from the start and it could work for some time, but a change of leadership in these two organizations could always have a change of heart. We've now covered two different legal setups for social impact ventures, B Corps and this hybrid situation. Let's cover one more setup that isn't as legal that is becoming more popular the pledge 1%. The pledge 1% movement is pretty simple. The request is that a company donates 1% of either equity, time, product, or profit towards philanthropy. The pledge 1% is not a legal commitment and is purely what they say it is, a pledge, a voluntary pledge. There's no audit, there's no legal commitment by the venture, it's purely voluntary and no one is truly validating how much an organization is giving back to philanthropy. For all of those reasons, I'm skeptical about how impactful Pledge 1% really is. Yes, there can absolutely be positive impact by this Pledge 1%, but if you're building a venture and you want to say that you're creating a positive impact on society, I feel like there are so many more impactful ways to do this than just signing a document that is essentially a pinky promise with no one checking you on it. It feels much more like a PR stunt than actual impact. Again, that's not for all, but I can see how it could be used that way, and that never excites me. If you're creating an impactful venture, please do more than 1% and be intentional about how you're being impactful, not just for PR or vanity metrics. I'm not completely against pledge 1% as it can be a good thing, but it's not something I'm sold on. Enough about pledge 1%, let's move on to why Patagonia Solution may be the future of social impact ventures. Patagonia Solution to ensuring Patagonia is staying on its mission to be an organization that is fighting the environmental crisis and defending nature is a really interesting solution. In a lot of ways, it's building upon the hybrid situation I mentioned earlier about having a for-profit venture and a non-profit organization. However, it's way more clever than what I've ever seen before when it comes to a hybrid setup. Up. In Patagonia Solution, they have set up two organizations, the Patagonia Purpose Trust and the Holdfast Collective. The Patagonia Purpose Trust owns all of the voting shares, aka all of the decision-making power, and the Holdfast Collective owns the rest. This may sound like it has the issues I mentioned earlier about hybrid situations where, where the for-profit organization has all of the power and the nonprofit is just getting scraps. In this situation though, that's not really the case. The voting shares that the Patagonia Purpose Trust owns is only 2% of the economic shares of Patagonia. This means that yes, the trust has decision-making power on how Patagonia itself operates, but only earns $2 for every $100 brought in. The $98 left over goes to the Holdfast Collective. For the Holdfast Collective to have 98% of the economic rights to Patagonia is a huge deal, especially when Forbes estimated that Patagonia made over $100 million in profits. A nonprofit organization with that economic power is a mightily powerful organization. I love this setup because it creates alignment when it comes to the mission of Patagonia. The Patagonia Purpose Trust can focus on the business end of Patagonia and make sure it's operating well, while the Holdfast Collective can focus on the mission of environmental sustainability. The decisions that either one is making impacts one another, but they're both aligned in what they're trying to accomplish. The economic rights of the trust aren't this extravagant percentage that will be manipulated either. It seems just right. For example, let's say Patagonia does make $100 million in profit this year. Only $2 million will go to the Patagonia Purpose Trust, while $98 million would go to the Holdfast Collective. For an organization that wants to ensure that it's fully aligned with its mission, this economic model seems wonderful. It's enough funders to make sure the people in the trust are paid well and to keep the lights on comfortably, while the Holdfast Collective can make a ton of impact with $98 million in profit. From an operational standpoint, it makes the roles of leadership really clear. 
The Patagonia Purpose Trust stays focused on how to run an apparel business, while the Hold Fast Collective focuses on being a great nonprofit organization. For one organization to try to do both of those things is like asking leadership to be a unicorn. Having leaders that have both of those skill sets is pretty much non-existent. Running an apparel business is completely different than running a nonprofit. This structure by Patagonia separates these roles and is clear as day of who is doing what. I love that. Now that's all a lot to process and think about. The question I have is that, is this a trend or a one-time event? I strongly believe that the majority of founders want to build a venture that yes, makes money, but more importantly, creates a significant positive impact on the world. All the hard work, long nights, and sacrifice it takes to build a successful venture doesn't ever seem like it's worth it for most if it doesn't produce a significant positive impact. As founders wanna make sure their venture doesn't lose its mission after they leave it, this solution by Patagonia seems like an amazing way of solving this age old problem of how to structure social ventures. Does this structure have some complications in it? Absolutely. Is this the most complicated structure ever though? Absolutely not. We won't know what this will all turn out to be in the end, but over the next few years and decade, we'll for sure know how this new structure will pan out for Patagonia. My gut tells me that this structure will not only work out well for Patagonia, but also for other ventures that want to ensure that they're having the positive impact they want to have. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you can give it a like, and if you're looking for other content like this, you can check out other videos on this channel, like this one here.